moving right along. We have covered most of the core components of the Linux system, and now we are at a place where we can interact with it. From passing instructions from the command line to controlling the system through a graphical user interface. You are watching episode 5 of the Layman's Guide to Linux, and today we will examine user space software right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Let's begin. I would like to take a moment to thank all of the community members who support this channel through their financial contributions. This one is for you. There are several core components of the Linux system which gives you the ability to interact with it. Again, this analysis is not meant to be exhaustive. The link in the description will take you to the reference materials that I used for putting together this series. Now, the first stop on our user space tour is the shell. Sometimes also called command line implements a textual interface that allows you to run programs and control the system by entering commands from the keyboard Without a shell or something that can replace it, like a desktop environment, making your system actually do something would be difficult. The shell is just a program, and there are several different shells for Linux, each one offering somewhat different features. Most Linux systems use the Born Again shell or Bash. In my humble opinion, the shell is the most powerful feature in Linux systems, and I can just imagine some of you are shaking your heads upon hearing me say this, thinking I have completely lost my mind. And while that may be partially true, that does not change the fact that it makes sense to use it, and here is an example. If you have ever gone onto a forum for resolution of a problem, you will notice that the procedure for troubleshooting and repair will involve a conversation where the output of a terminal command is requested, and then the solution is given in the form of another terminal command. Why is this? Simply put, there is no one way to do things in Linux. There are many types of user interfaces and different graphical ways to achieve the same goal. Using the shell bridges the gap amongst users and offers a common ground for support. The shell is not a piece of software novices should fear. Rather, it should be embraced. Sometimes I feel it is more convenient to open a terminal rather than hunting down a graphical switch buried 20 clicks deep in my control center. If you would like to discover more about the shell, please see my playlist titled CLI Friendly. The series is made for beginners. While it is certainly not among my most popular offerings, it is important nonetheless. Next on our tour of user space, we come to the X Window Manager. Now, uh, the X Window Server is a graphical replacement for the command shell. It is responsible for drawing graphics and processing input from the keyboard, mouse, tablets, and other devices. The X server is network transparent. That is, it allows you to work in a graphical environment both on your computer and on a remote computer, which you can connect across the network. The X server that is most widely used today is Xorg. Most graphical programs need only the X server to run so they can be used under any window manager or desktop environment. Over the past 10 years, there have been attempts to make replacements to X. Some distributions offer Wayland as a replacement, but will fall back to Xorg 
in the event the display drivers do not su have support for Wayland. And it is my understanding that this can happen with some proprietary or bleeding edge blobs. Ubuntu also attempted to replace X and develop Mir to bridge the user experience of their mobile operating system to their Unity desktop. Now that Ubuntu has switched back to GNOME, fresh installations will default to Xorg, but Wayland can be chosen by users if they desire it. The next stop on our tour is one of my favorites, the Window Manager, because you can do some really cool things with some of them that are available. The Window Manager is a program that communicates with the X server. Its task is managing windows. It is responsible for drawing the window borders, bringing a window to the front when you click on it, moving it to the screen and hiding it when you minimize its program. And examples of popular window managers are, well, my favorite is Compiz, which is an advanced window manager with lots of eye candy, like a customizable window animations, wobbly windows. But it also has some interesting accessibility features, too. And then next is KWIN, which is a KDE's window manager. And if you think Compiz has a lot of eye candy, so does KWIN. Um, and they also have a lot of uh, neat little accessibility features. Another one that comes to mind is a Metacity, which was uh, for GNOME 2's window manager. And then, of course, when GNOME 3 came out, it was replaced by Mutter. And then, of course, uh, the Cinnamon Project picked up Mutter and uh, forked it and made Muffin. <laughs> and then, of course, XFWM, and I use that when I don't want the fancy special effects. That one is for uh, the XFCE window manager. And this is a lightweight manager designed to consume as little resources as possible without compromising usability. Now, there are many, many more window managers available for Linux. It's impossible for me to mention all of them in the allotted runtime. So my apologies if I did not mention your favorite. Finally, in our tour of user space, I'm going to briefly touch on desktop environments. Now, desktop environments such as GNOME or the GNU Object Model Environment, KDE, K Desktop Environment, and XFCE or XForm Common Environment are collections of programs designed to present a consistent user interface for most common tasks. They're what most people mean when they say operating system, even though they are only a piece of the whole operating system. Multiple desktop environments can coexist on the same Linux machine. They can be easily installed, and after installation, the user will be given a way to select which desktop environment to start the session with. Additionally, you can run several, you can run different desktops and different TTYs, and you can have multiple desktops running at the same time. How cool is that? That's something Windows definitely can't do, hey? In addition to the three most popular desktops I mentioned, there are a bunch of others, and it seems like there are new ones coming out all the time. I remember a time when there was only two choices. It was either KDE or GNOME, and now our ecosystem has pretty much grown to accommodate anyone's tastes. So we have desktop options with, with accessibility in mind, or maybe one of the tiling user interfaces is more to your liking. It is impossible for me to give mention to them all, so I have a list of desktops in the show notes below, which you can learn more about should you decide to know more. Okay, I think I have covered enough ground for today, and in our next session, I believe we can wrap this mini-series up with the discussion on file systems and permissions. If you find these types of videos to be useful to you, please consider supporting us by visiting cupoflinux.com and hitting the donate button. It is clear to me that my audience prefers this style of presentation when I gauge views and retention demographics, so you can be assured there is plenty more videos and playlists like this one to come. Thanks for watching, and until next time, 
Peace out.